my name is uh, Vivek Jain. I am a child neurologist in Santokba Dullabji Hospital, Jaipur. Child neurology, see, initially as a pediatrician, I trained as a pediatrician. And as a pediatrician, you have to see a uh, wide variety of cases, diseases, uh, which includes child neurology. And that was one branch where I saw that the, the reason I took medicine as a career still existed. Because in child neurology, you have to talk to the families, take the history, think, examine, and then investigate. Well, all other branches in child neurology, uh, in pediatrics or in adult medicine, actually now people are starting from investigation and then going back to the patient and seeing him. But child neurology, you just cannot do it. You have to stay with the basic tenets of medicine as you talk to the families about the symptoms, about uh, what signs are you have a look, and then you decide about the investigation, which is so relevant in our country because you cannot really investigate a lot, even if you wanted to, because of the financial issues. So that was something which interested me. You're like a, uh, uh, you're like a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a disease uh, which is not known to you, but as you take the history, examination, and few investigation, you are able to reach to a diagnosis, give it to the families, and then then you take it forward. So, and, and there is so much happening in child neurology as for investigations, testing, especially genetic testing, which had uh, uh, reached to a level to help us find a diagnosis in child neurology. That's why I took it. So when I was, um, I was in PJ Chandigarh, uh, when I, was, I did my pediatric training there. And at that time, the training in child neurology didn't exist in India. So I had to move out to UK and there um, I trained in child neurology and in fact uh, the, social, the, the going to UK itself because when you go to a new country the social aspects, the, the clinical aspects, everything is so different from what you do it in India and that was, uh, that was an eye opener and uh, I, I was lucky enough to be trained by very good child neurologists there and uh, was also having access to many investigations which didn't exist in India at the time. So your eyes see what your brain knows. So that's why you could see diseases diagnosed there which uh, trains you every day. And then at that time I thought then if these, then I should apply this knowledge and come back to India to help the people here. So. So, so that's what uh, I did afterwards, and I came back to India after my full uh, training for around nine, ten years. I was there in UK, and then a year in Melbourne, and then I came to India to do child neurology. So, uh, it's not so in India. Child neurology is still in the nascent stage. Um, you don't have many child neurologists, and there are many more child neurology diseases. Um, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, there is a condition called a severe epilepsy called infantile spasms, and we accumulated over three years cases. In India, there were 120 cases. And my colleague in Glasgow, he accumulated for whole of Scotland, and there were 32 cases. So you know, the diseases are four or five times more in India than, in, uh, than overseas, in the Western world. And you compare the number of uh, child neurologists in Scotland for those 32 cases are 15, and in Rajasthan, there are three child neurologists. So, so the population of Rajasthan is the population of Great Britain. So, so that's the difference. So the diseases are more, but the doctors to treat them are not there. And the diseases are very different at times. You have more infections in India, neurological infections, while there they have they have won over the inf infections. They, they don't have that many, so they are more genetic problems. We do have them, but more infections. So uh, uh, in child neurology, it's come in a big way. Um, we, if in my outpatient clinic, if I see 10 patients, four patients out of 10 definitely need help from genomics to make a diagnosis, 40% of the patients. So it's not that in India, everything is about infections. There's a lot of genetics in neurology and our aim should be that if we can make a diagnosis for the child, we can tell the future to the family and we can prevent that condition from happening again. I've had patients where four siblings have been affected by the same disease because we couldn't find the answer. 
and neurologically affected, the families are destroyed and they cannot do much. But if we can find a diagnosis, we can sort of prevent it from happening. So genomics is very important. Um, in fact, uh, I am thankful to MedGenome because they helped us for a genetics project, which we recently did in collaboration with the Royal Hospital for Sick Children in Glasgow. Uh, there was a medical student who came from there last year to sit with me, and she found that in this particular type of condition called infantile spasm, which is a form of severe epilepsy in children, in India, there were a lot of children who didn't have an answer why it happened. So as I trained in Glasgow as well, so me, her, and her consultant in Glasgow together made a project where we compared the cases where their cases and our cases, what are the genetic causes of this severe type of epilepsy? And uh, Medgenome was very uh, kind enough to give us a research grant of, of uh, uh, around, you know, around 40 cases we tested, and each, for each case, the test costs around 1,25,000 rupees. So that comes to around 1,500 pounds per, per patient. Uh, and uh, the patients otherwise will have had to pay from their pocket and they would never have reached a diagnosis because they wouldn't afford it. So we did it, we found new genes which were responsible for spasm in India which were different from in UK and uh, the families were helped because uh, they had a diagnosis for their child and we could prevent this problem from happening again in the next child. So that way it was useful. The most important challenge is the challenge of doctors themselves knowing about genomics, the role of genomics in pediatrics, in medicine, in child neurology, medicine, period, everywhere. So once they have treated an infection or they have ruled out an infection, they don't go further. Okay, this child probably has some genetic disease and then they stop there. But they need to be aware that this disease, if there are tests available in India, uh, which we can do to find the name of the disease, which can then be prevented from happening in the family again. That's very important. But then the second challenge is, even if they go that far, uh, the parents cannot afford the test. Even if, so if I, so I told you out of 10 cases, four cases need genetic testing. Of those four, if I ask them to get the genetic testing, only one will agree to get it done because they cannot afford it. So the affordability is an issue big issue. Uh, so these are the two major issues, the awareness and then testing, uh, which if is available through the government setup, it will be great so that you can really benefit a lot of people. So, 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 so the government itself should uh, uh, get in touch with the best uh, companies, genetic companies which are doing the testing and through them subsidize the cost or take up the cost themselves. So insurance company and the government, they too have, have the role to take it forward.